Today we're making some beautiful vintage Easter crafts. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome. The first project are going to be two Easter ornaments. I'm going to start off with two little ornaments here and you can use whatever you have on hand. I've got these little decor eggs from Dollar Tree. I've got some Dollar Tree stickers and some Dollar Tree transfers. So two different kinds that I'm looking at. One with beautiful flowers and the other just a black and white with a bunch of words on it. Okay, to start with, we're gonna take the tags and the original hangers off of these eggs. And decide which one of these transfers we want to use first. I want this to be a background and this is a really easy way for me to do it and see exactly what's going to go on it. So I just kind of lift up the top part where the transfer is and I put the egg on the inside. I'm going to push it down because it'll cling to it just lightly and then I can burnish that down. I'm just using a Mod Podge squeegee here to press all that down into the paint that is on that egg in the background. I love the vintage look of this transfer. Dollar Tree did a very good job on this, I think. So I'm just gonna make sure I have it all down I'm going to go over where the cracks are. I'm going to go around all of the edges very carefully. You can use a popsicle stick for this too, I believe. And then carefully, I'm going to peel it away. Now, some of the transfer is coming off. I'm not going to put that back on there. I'm going to leave it off because I want this to look vintage and aged. So there may be some overhang on there. We'll be able to just rub that right off. Can just rub it off or you could sand it off but it came off pretty easily just with my fingers and my hand and again just making sure everything is down and in its place on this one i'm going to take the little corner and just go right down in each of those slats to really make that pop and appear as though it was hand painted or written onto that egg next i am going to choose my little bunny ornament and this, these little poppets I got from the thrift store. It was a big package and I use it all the time. So when you're out thrifting, be sure that you look for things that maybe you wouldn't normally look for or, you know, use. Um, a lot of times people look for bigger pieces because it's a good value when you're thrifting. But also be sure that you take time to look. Uh, I think with mine, they put it with the books. Sometimes these things are in, in with the kids' toys. And uh, I also find my art supplies that way, like paint and paintbrushes. They'll be in with the kid stuff. So once I have that down, and I love it because they're foam and they, they make a great bit of dimension, which will go ahead and put a shadow back there and really make it pop off the background. I'm just going to place it down, press it into place, and it will cling there without any more work. You don't have to glue it down. I'll take the leftovers of these Dollar Tree flowers, and these are trimmed in a gold, which I thought would be very pretty to go with this yellow egg background and the vintage, you know, the little vintage pop. This isn't exactly what I would call Victorian. It sort of starts that way in the background, but then on the top, you know, we're getting a little into what people refer to as retro. This is also thrifted. This is some ribbon. I'm going to cut it off and we're going to use this as a new hanger. There was already a sheer ribbon on there, the yellow one, but it was very wrinkled and kind of sad looking. So I decided to just go ahead and use the white for that. I'm just going to tie a knot and this is so simple. This is a very easy knot. And now I'm just going to pull that and that will hold it in place. I didn't want to use jute on this because, again, I want to keep this kind of retro looking. So I'm going to use the little ribbon and I'll pull that around so the knot sits right in the hole. And the ribbon is cut at a slant so it'll give it a pretty look, a little pretty finish. And I'm going to glue it on the back side. 
be very careful with that. Don't burn yourself. And then once it's dry, you can lay it back on your table. You don't want to glue it to the table. This is how this one looks so far. Very cute. You can add more flowers. You can add anything you want to add. And with that said, I think this little bunny needs a bow. So maybe this is a boy bunny and a girl bunny. I am going to make two girl bunnies because I have two daughters. One of my daughters is going to have my first grandson very soon and we're excited about that and then my younger daughter is still in elementary school so these are going to be going to represent my two girls i think and i will cut this little simple bow off i'm going to keep those tails very short so it doesn't take away from the bunny's cute little face and i'll place it down right there on the top right by her ears and i think that gave it just the right touch to finish this one off. All right, so let's start on the second one. So these beautiful transfers came from Dollar Tree as well, like I mentioned, and I'm gonna decide how I want the egg behind it, how I wanna put that on there. So I'm just going to lay this one sideways so I can get a lot of those big roses in there. Same process as before. I'm just gonna burnish this down. So what else could you use for this if you didn't have a squeezy, uh, a squeegee popsicle stick? You could use your fingernail. You could use um, the end of a paint stir stick. It's square and wood, that would work. I don't wanna use metal because I don't want to tear anything. And I'm not really sure how sturdy these are on this backing. So I'm just showing you here how you could do that if you wanted to do it with the end of a paint stir stick. I always have extras of these paint star sticks around and I don't throw them away because they're great for little things like this. And also bridging pieces together in the back. So another little money saving tip there for you. Go around those edges good. You don't want anything to be loose. Then to, just to make it a little bit easier, I'm going to cut the excess off of this one. There's a lot of detail in this and begin to pull it up. There again, you can see there are some pieces that didn't stick down and that doesn't bother me. Look how pretty this red and green looks on this yellow. I could not believe it. So I'm just gonna use my little squeegee to go around the edges and make sure that that is nice and smooth. I won't be pushing, the, pushing down and indenting in those cracks on this one. So again, here are our thrifted little poppets. You peel off the front, you peel off the back, and you push them down. I know Dollar Tree has something similar. I'm not sure they're as small or as thick as these. This just makes it a lot easier for me. If you don't have them, you can always just put the, you could just make this just a purely a Dollar Tree project if you wanted to, and just go pick your supplies up from there. You could paint your own ornaments. They always have a variety of little wooden ornaments that you can fix yourself. These particular ones came from Timu. I am not sponsored by Timu. I just wanted to try some project products and I really, really like them. So here's a card, a thank you card that I got at the thrift store. Got a package of them and I love them because they're so Victorian. And I am just pulling off the raised areas and they have little, the little stickers on the back too. So every little raised piece that I can take off and use again, I'm gonna reuse it. You can also use stickers, whatever you think you would like to use, but I love how these looked with this. Again, there's some gold trim in it, which really screams vintage to me. And I just think that is the most adorable little thing. So we're gonna put the bow on this umbrella. She's got a little parasol down here, and I'm gonna put it right on that little umbrella, kind of where the stick attaches to the open part. Then I'm going to add some of the little bundles of flowers. I put one on her bonnet. I think I put another one on her bonnet. Yep. And then we'll add one more right here on the side. And they're at different levels, but they still stand away. So the 3D look of this is just, I really like it. It's different. We're gonna make a different tie for this one, but we're using the same ribbon. 
gonna go through it and then this time I'm gonna wrap it over on itself and just tie it like this and it only takes one knot you don't have to tie it twice it's nice and tight this one I'm gonna leave the knot up there at the top and then I grab the remainder of this gold cording that I used at Christmas on my Victorian creations and I will use this to go around the edge of this one a little more gold a little more pop you know from what my viewers have told me Victorians use a little bit of anything they had around to make their creations so why wouldn't this be on some drapery or maybe off of an old dress I think it works great for Christmas and holiday projects but it really brought a little extra something a little more richness to this ornament I think but you can let me know what you think This video is part of the Thrift Flip Road Trip, but I'll give you a little more information on that in just a bit. Be careful when you get back to the end that you don't have a bunch of frays and nasty stuff. Overlap it slightly and cut on a slant. Any extra bulk just push to the back. You can see what I've done here so that the front has a nice finish. And you can't really tell where it starts and stops. I like that. It's kind of hidden behind the ribbon. You can watch my videos at 5 p.m. on Mondays and Thursdays. The next project is an Easter flower can. I love making my floral arrangements, so I found this little can at Goodwill. Oh, I fell in love. I just knew what I wanted to do with it. We're going to use some scraps of foam some of these eggs on a pick also thrifted and I think every floral that I use here yes all of these were thrifted and then I have some more I'll add in the end they were thrifted this is another one of those Timu ornaments she's so cute look at her little bonnet so of course when you're doing florals you're gonna need some foam to hold it in place so I'm just gonna cut I got a table and the table came with all of this foam. I saved this foam. It is the fantastic quality. It doesn't peel or flake off. It's easy to cut with my little Dollar Tree knife here. We wanna finish off on the top with some green so that you don't see the white. I'd have had scraps, that's all I had, or I would have used green for the whole thing. So we're gonna cut these off, and my first cut is gonna to be to see how tall I want the arrangement to be. And I know that I want it to be about this size. So I will try to cut the rest of my florals and greenery so that they are that size or shorter. I cut the leaf off of this hydrangea and I will save it for another project if I need it. Then I wanna pick what is the front or the back and I realize, look at the writing on here. Can you see what that says? So you can see that it, where it came from in case you're looking for one. It was probably like uh, for candy or something like that. Maybe nuts. Sometimes you can get mixed nuts in those types of little cans. You might have something around the house you can use. You can even cover an old can of corn or beans with some pretty paper and use that. And I'm just going to start adding everything in a little bit lower than I added my roses or my ranunculus, whatever that is there. Except for the greenery, of course. And I picked up a little rosemary and added to it. I've got some black eyed Susans. And I'm putting these in a group of three instead of separating them because black eyed Susans grow in sort of like bunches. You would see them in little clusters. Just like that. They grow along the side of the road in the ditches where I live, and they're just beautiful, I think. Then I had some random scraps of different types of greenery I've added in there. I mean, it's springtime, so, you know, let's do it right here. Let's make it springy. And by all means, if you don't want to do Easter themed, you don't have to add the Easter eggs and stuff like that. You could use a can that doesn't have Easter eggs on it. You know, you could do it that way. I'm just going to keep adding all of these little wildflowers and these pretty little flowers that I think would match and look good with the theme of the other uh, pictures that are on this can. 
I don't use purple much, so I was thrilled to be able to use the purple today. And I love the way that purple and yellow look together, or purple and gold. Uh, maybe it's because, you know, I have lived in Louisiana, so everybody loves LSU in Louisiana. So I'm not a sports person, so I don't know, but I did see a lot of it there. And it's very comforting to me to put these colors together for some reason. No place like home, right? All right, so I'm going to continue to add. This is a Gerber Daisy. Very pretty. It's the only one I had, so it's by itself, just like the little hydrangea, just hanging out there by itself. I have some thrifted baby's breath. I really like the way this baby's breath looks, but you can get the ones that are like the little foam balls from Dollar Tree that I think they have named baby's breath. They're kind of messy. They're not quite as realistic looking, but they'll work for your project. You know, you want to put different textures and different colors. So look at all the color and texture in here. Mainly golds, whites, and purple. And the beautiful flyaway greenery that's in there. Love it. So we need to make a pick out of this little girl ornament. I'm going to place her down. I'm just taking a pick that another floral came off of. I saved these things, y'all. I got a jar full of them. And I'm just going to place it on the back, cover it with a little bit of scrap paper. And then we'll place her down in there, a bit off to the side, but still kind of toward the top. Move the little things around so she is not blocked. We want to be able to see her in that suite. And then here's one of the floral picks. I have another one, this one that is kind of yellow and peachy. It's got little chicks on it, very cute. We're gonna add that one in too. You can bend them if they're on wires, remember that. All right, so far so good. Always look at it from all angles to make sure you don't have holes or places that don't look balanced. I've got some little speckled eggs, not sure where they came from, maybe Dollar Tree, maybe they were thrifted. I'm just using a gold one and a white one and placing those down, and I think that was the chef's kiss. Mwah. Yes, I think adding those little eggs made it good. Our host for the Thrift Flip Road Trip are Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs and Trish and Kay from Crafting Cousins. Join us on our new day, the second Thursday, every other month. There's going to be a playlist linked where you can go and watch all of the rest of the creators who are joining. The next project is an Easter wreath. I'm going to take some ribbon that I was very, very fortunate to find thrifting. The burlap ribbon, and then I got some ribbon that looks like Dollar Tree ribbon, so you could use that. This is a little paper egg, probably had candy in it, but look how gorgeous these pictures are. Oh my goodness, look at them. They're precious. I got these from a store called Dirt Cheap. I paid 50 cents a piece for each pick, and we're going to use two picks. These are some thrifted dogwood pieces, and also some thrifted willow pieces. You see there? It's the same theme as in there. Okay, now I have a grapevine wreath that I also got thrifting. I never buy my wreath forms unless they're wire from Dollar Tree. And we're going to begin to place these down. Now, I took my hanger off the back because I didn't want that to be my decision maker of where I put my pieces of greenery and where I put, um, you know, how it looked in the end because I like to move things around. So I just took that off and we'll make another one in the end. I'm going to weave this pick, the first one, through here. I always fluff them out, you know, you want to fluff them out. Then using some floral wire also from the thrift store. My cutters are also from the thrift store. We are going to weave it through that grapevine wreath and over the wiring for the greenery. And this is going to make sure that it keeps that curve and that it doesn't fall. You can cut your edges off or turn them back to the back and then fix those back the way you like them. I'm forever fluffing. If you followed me for a while, you know I'm forever fluffing. I cannot leave it as is. I've got to mess with it. Then we're gonna put a piece along the bottom. And this will be the bottom. This is not going to be a typical round wreath covered completely around. We're gonna, we wanna see that wood underneath or that vine underneath. 
Same process as we did before. Wherever you need to use floral wire to help you place things down, do that. Using the floral wire will allow me to go back in, cut it off, and repurpose this greenery. I can use it for another project later if I want to. I don't sell my projects. I make them for myself. I make them for my videos and then most of them get broken back down and reused but there are some I have a cabinet that is full of the ones that I really love and I've kept that's that might be something I could put in a video if anyone's interested let me know if you would like to see the projects that I have kept for myself I can definitely uh, add that into a video somewhere so I know I'm out of camera angle up here when my daughter is home and she's crafting with me downstairs I kind of get distracted so I wasn't really looking at how I had the camera placed in this part and I do apologize for that but what I did there on the side is the same thing I'm doing on the bottom so whatever you might have missed you're gonna do the same thing that I'm doing here up there I'm trying to take the willow branches and kind of feed them around the laurel so it kind of looks like it's all growing together. It's interspersed together. And I'm just going to have them kind of, you know, at a central point where the stems go and then they get a little bit wider and broader as they go outward. Next, this beautiful dogwood pick. If I would have found a bag full, I would have picked up the whole bag. Dogwoods are beautiful to me. I love them. And they scream spring because they are blooming here already in South Alabama. And I love it. I'm not mad at all that winter is going. Not at all. How about you? Okay, so like I said before, what you're doing on the bottom, you're going to do the same thing over here on the side. It's not going to be perfectly symmetrical but that's not the look that I'm going for I still like the wild right still like the wild so we're going to be using this on the wreath but we need a backing on it because we have to have some way to attach it to the wreath right I'm going to use some hot glue and just a scrap of cardstock paper I'm going to press it down the glue is going to drain down it's going to you know funnel down onto the paper because of gravity then I'm going to use a stick, kind of clean it up a little bit, and go back in with my glue gun. Then I'll use the stick again to make it nice and smooth, kind of like you do caulking around a bathtub. Then we're going to trim it out. Now it has a back. It has better surface area for us to attach something. But we need to do something with the edge. I thrifted this beautiful trim from Goodwill. When I say Goodwill, I'm saying the Goodwill bins. I know a lot of people don't understand and they say they can't afford things at the thrift store. I go to the Goodwill bins and it's a little different. Little different. You pay by the pound. Okay, so now this egg is complete. And she'll be glued down to the project shortly. Let's work on a bow. I want my bow to be nice and simple. This is a simple type of an arrangement, a simple type of a wreath. We're not going to make it too fussy. It doesn't need to be extremely festive it just needs to say hello spring you know saying hello spring without actually saying hello spring so you see the kind of bow i'm making here very easy i tie it with a double knot in the back i'm going to flip that over kind of puff it a little bit it does have wire and then we'll be adding another bow on top with this ribbon if you don't have this ribbon there's something very similar but a little bit wider at dollar tree it's been in every Dollar Tree that I have been to, so hopefully this is something that you can get your hands on. I will tie this also in a double knot, and then we're going to tie the two of these together. I will tie them rather than gluing them because I want to have the ties still on there to attach them down to the wreath. We're going to take the tails and the little loops, fluff, and pull down, get it in the shape that it needs to be in, And then we can trim the tails off to a length that suits you. You can dovetail it. You can cut it at a slant. Whichever way you like it. I like to cut my upper bow uh, tails a little bit shorter so that you can see the longer one underneath. That's just my preference, but you can do anything you like here. And then I will tie it down to the wreath right over where we put the bottom row in. So right around there and then glue down that little egg. And look how pretty this is. This is very cottagey, this is very country. I think it is so pretty. Farmhouse rustic, it can be so many things. You know, don't lock yourself in the box of one style. If there's something that you love, 
do what you love. Do what brings you joy in your own home, right? All right, so now this is our hanger. And here are our projects. Be sure you check out the links below for the playlist so that you can go and support everyone else who has created some thrift flips for you. We're saving money with thrift flips and with Dollar Tree items, and so is everybody else in the playlist. So go and see what they've worked hard on too. Thank you, Sammy and Trish and Kay, for this fun collaboration every other month. I thank you so very much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!